okay so let us start uh, today's session uh, in the last session we have finished with the analysis of simple air cooling system okay we also solve one problem based on that okay so now in this uh, session we will uh, understand okay or we will see the schematic and the ts diagram for the bootstrap air cooling system okay also we will uh, further try to extend it for bootstrap air evaporative cooling system okay because lastly we have seen it for simple air cooling system also for simple air evaporative cooling system okay so here also we will see for initially bootstrap air cooling system followed by bootstrap air evaporative cooling system okay so let us let us start first with this basic bootstrap air cooling system okay so as you can see now okay so all of you okay just, just see the uh, schematic diagram uh, for the bootstrap air cooling system okay so when you talk about the major components of this bootstrap air cooling system okay what you can see is you can see this main compressor we have a compressor okay we have this first heat exchanger okay we have this second heat exchanger okay uh, and we have this cooling turbine all of you see when we see simple air cooling system so in simple air cooling system okay there were only one compressor okay there were only one compressor if you want me to to just uh, uh, show you okay so you see this is a simple air cooling system where we have only one compressor and only one heat exchanger okay this is simple air cooling system where we have only one compressor and one heat exchanger okay now we are seeing bootstrap air cooling system okay where we have okay two compressor okay one is main compressor and second is secondary compressor as well as we have two heat exchangers you can see this is the first heat exchanger and this is the second heat exchanger okay see that, that is the reason why this system it is different from simple air cooling system okay so in simple air cooling system which which we have seen in the previous sessions okay we have only one compressor and one heat ex heat exchanger okay but here what we have here we have two compressor okay so one we will call it as main compressor and second we will call it as secondary compressor at the same time we have two heat exchanger okay one is first heat exchanger and second is second heat exchanger okay now see when, when you just see this diagram okay so uh, let us start okay uh, here understanding this uh, processes okay so this is the ambient air ambient air it means what okay it's it's the inlet air okay so inlet air will will come at point number 1 okay so inlet air will come at point number 1 so you can see this point number 1 here okay so inlet air will come at this point that is point number 1 okay you just see this point point number 1 okay it will come at point number 1 right so once it come at point number 1 what happens we will ram it okay so at point number 1 what is the value of the pressure we have okay on, on this line you will observe that pressure is p1 right on this line okay on at any point on this line okay pressure is p1 okay and temperature is t1 you can see at point number 1 see this is a point number 1 which is a inlet condition so at point number 1 we have temperature t1 okay and this point number 1 it is lying on this pressure line where pressure is p1 right so this is the ambient ambient pressure what you can see on this ts diagram okay so once it will come at point number 1 what we will do we will ram it okay so we will ram it so what is the meaning of ram it okay so see the inlet air or ambient air we will ram it so it will comes out at point number 2 it will comes out at point number 2 okay now see what is it 2 2 during 1 2 2 what happens is during ramming its pressure increases okay so what pressure it got increase the pressure got increase to p2 as you can see on this line okay because this point number 2 it is on this pressure line where pressure is p2 you can see this ideal ramming pressure okay so that that ambient air got rammed okay to pressure p2 as well as 
okay during this ramming what happens temperature also got increased to t2 okay so pressure p1 becomes p2 okay temperature t1 becomes p2 as you can see here see here here the pressure was p1 now pressure got increased to p2 similarly here temperature was t1 temperature got increased to t2 okay now see this process 1 2 2 it's a ideal ramming okay see this process 1 2 2 if you want i'll just write down here also 1 2 2 it's a ideal ramming process ideal ram it's a ideal ramming process 1 2 2 it's a ideal ramming process okay now now let us start okay now let us see the actual process okay so actual process is 1 2 2 dash you can see actual process is 1 2 2 dash see what is the difference between ideal and actual in ideal we are expecting the pressure to be p2 you can see in the ideal process what pressure we are expecting we are expecting it to be p2 okay but in actual we got the pressure equal to p2 dash you can see this line on this line what is the pressure p2 dash okay so wh what happens in actual in actual we are able to ramp it to a lower pressure see we want it to be p2 but we are able to ram it only up to p dash you can see p2 is greater than p2 dash right on this line okay the pressure p2 it is greater than the actual pressure okay that means ideally we are we are able to ram it to higher pressure but in actual we are able to ram it to lower pressure as you can see so this point number 2 it's ideal while 2 dash it's actual because because see point number 2 at point number 2 pressure is higher as compared to point number 2 dash is that okay yes is that okay or not let me know yes yes all of yes, you sir. okay so what is the ideal ramming see what is the ideal ramming ideal ramming it is also known as isentropic ramming ideal ramming it is also known as i say isentropic ramming okay isentropic ramming means what okay in isentropic ramming okay isentropic this is also known as adiabatic right isentropic it is also known as adiabatic right isentropic it is also known as adiabatic okay where we have efficiency equal to 100 percent right ideal means what we will have efficiency equal to 100 right now now let us let us move to the actual process so what is our actual process actual process is one to two dash see one to two dash it's the actual process okay so now i'll just write down this as actual ram this is a actual ramming process okay one to two dash it's the actual ramming process why it is actual okay because we will get the efficiency less than 100 percent we'll get efficiency less than 100 percent that is the actual process okay so one to two dash two dash it's the actual ramming process one to two it's ideal one to two dash it's actual okay what difference between ideal and actual you will get okay ideally you want it to ram at a higher pressure ideally you want the air to be rammed okay at a higher pressure but in actual it is get rammed to lower pressure as you can see on the uh, ts diagram okay because at point number two we have higher pressure as compared to point number two dash okay so that means point number two it's ideal and two dash is actual okay so actually air get compressed to less pressure as compared to the ideal ideal okay so that is all about one two okay now see once it is getting out of out at point number two okay we will supply that that rammed air okay to the compressor so this point it is nothing but a compressor right so once it is getting rammed so we will supply it to the compressor so see point number two point number two it's the outlet of the rammed air or it is inlet to the compressor point number two okay at point number two we have a rammed air which will supply to the compressor okay so see point number two okay you will get if you compress it ideally or you will get point number two dash if you compress it actually okay so two dash two dash okay we'll start now from the two dash point number two dash okay so th this is what two dash it's the inlet to the compressor okay it's the inlet to the compressor right so point number two dash is the inlet to the compressor okay 
so from point number 2 we will start compressing it okay so when we compress it you can move you can see that okay this 2 dash to 3 okay 2 dash to 3 if you want here also i will write down okay this 2 dash to 3 okay it's a isentropy I, i'll just write down it's a ideal ideal compression it's a ideal compression okay which occurs in a compressor it's a ideal compression which occurs in a compressor ideal it is also known as isentropy ideal it is also known as isentropy or this is also known as adiabatic right this is also known as adiabatic right so what what, what do you understand by uh, uh, this ideal ideal or isentropic or adiabatic as i told you you are getting efficiency 100% 100% efficiency you have for 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 what for 2 dash to 3 because it's a vertical line also here you can see 1 to 2 was a vertical line that means it's a isentropic process where efficiency is 100 okay so on the similar line 2 dash to 3 is again a vertical line okay that means it's isentropic that's why okay we are getting efficiency 100 okay but see this compressor might not give the 100 percent efficiency okay in actual condition okay this compressor will not be 100 percent efficient in actual condition okay so in that case we might have the process like 2 dash to 3 dash okay so you can see okay so 2 dash to 3 dash i will i will write, now write down the process 2 dash to 3 dash it's a actual it's the actual compression 2 dash to 3 dash it's a actual compression okay so what is the actual compression where you will have efficiency less than 100 percent right you will have efficiency less than 100 percent okay that means what okay when you see this line 2 dash to 3 okay so 2 dash see 2 dash it is the temperature at the inlet of the compressor okay so at the inlet the temperature was 2 dash and pressure was p2 dash you can see the pressure p2 dash so what we will do we will compress it so when we compress it isentropically we will get the point number 3 where pressure uh, pressure is p3 okay on this line if you want i'll just write down on this line on this line the pressure is p3 okay on this line pressure is p3 okay and we will get the pressure equal to p3 and temperature equal to t3 as you can see the so pressure is p3 and temperature is equal to t3 so this is ideal case okay but there might be possibility that okay the compression is not 100 percent efficient or the compressor is not 100 percent efficient so if it is not we need to go for the actual process that is 2 dash to 3 dash okay so i'll just write down here that's 2 dash to 3 dash it's the actual compression right 2 dash to 3 dash is the actual compression so this 3 or 3 dash we will get it here okay so i'll just mark this as 2 or you can also call this as 2 dash you can call this 3 or you can also call this as a 3 dash right based on the based on whether the process is ideal or actual okay so now we got now to point number 3 or 3 dash okay so whether it's ideal or actual okay you can say that we are compressing it to a same pressure okay so p3 or p3 dash okay we are having same pressure okay whether it's a p3 or whether it's a p3 dash okay we are having the same pressure because we are compressing it okay to the same pressure right we are compressing it to the same pressure yeah is that okay yes all of you is it okay with the process yes sir let me know okay now see now it is getting out of the compressor once it is getting out of the compressor what we'll do okay we will some part okay we will supply it to the combustion chamber okay only some part will be supplied to the combustion chamber where the heat is added okay and that further heat is flowed on the blades of the turbine that, that air is flown on the blades of the turbine so what happens the blades of the turbine will start rotating okay and when the blades of the turbine will start rotating obviously okay the, the blades are mounted on a shaft okay so that shaft will also start rotating okay and that shaft will give the power to the compressor simple see the compressor is a power consuming device which requires a power okay so from where we will supply the power okay so what we will do out of some compressor we will supply to the turbine okay which will generate a power okay and that power same power will supply to the compressor 
okay so compressor will consume a power how it will consume a power it will consume the power from the power which is which is developed by the turbine okay now see maximum portion will be supplied to what it will be supplied to the heat exchanger okay so let us see this, this is a heat exchanger through which the heat is through which the air is flowing okay so you can see the air is flowing okay, air is coming like this okay so if you want i'll just show it okay so the air is flowing the compressed air from the compressor okay it is coming to the heat exchanger okay like this okay so air is flowing like this as you can see in the diagram okay now we need to cool this air okay see as the name indicates it's a heat exchanger we need to cool it okay so what we will do is okay so as to so as to cool the air which is flowing through this tube okay what we will do we will supply some ambient air okay what we will do is we will supply some ambient air okay so, so some air we will supply here okay so this air i, I will just show it with the different color okay so that you will be in a position to understand okay so see all of you here okay so what 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 will happen See this cool air, okay? So this cool air, it is coming, right? So this cool air, it is flowing on the on the compressed air. Okay, this cool air, it is flowing on the compressed air. Okay, where the compressed air is flowing? Okay, the compressed air is flowing through the tubes. Okay, and the cool air, it is flowing on the tubes. Okay, so what will happen? This cool air, when it flow on these tubes. what happens this cool air okay it turns out to be hot air okay it turns out to be hot air this cold air will turns out to be hot air and this hot air okay at the exit it it turns out to be cold air try to understand it will turn out to be cold air. is that okay yes so at at point at this exit yes, of the yeah see I, i'll just i'll just erase this one okay, i'll just erase this part okay i'll let this erase this part okay because it might be complicated to uh, okay the diagram becomes more complicated then okay. so let us see here all of you. okay so as as i told you okay what happens see what happens here is see this this is the this is the air which is flowing through the tube okay this is a hot air so when hot air it comes in contact with this cold air what happens okay see this 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 hot air becomes cold and this cold air becomes hot okay if you want i'll just mention here here what we we are having here we have cold air so when this cold air it turns out to be hot air okay it turns out to be hot air what happens with this hot air this is the hot air okay this is the hot air which is flowing the hot air is flowing okay through the through this channel okay this hot air when it exchange the heat with the cold air okay then that hot this cold air okay becomes hot and hot air hot air becomes cold right and hot air becomes cold okay so 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 let us see here see this cold air okay okay we didn't see this is a hot 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 finally it is coming as hot cold okay here we'll get a cold air okay so here what i'll do okay i'll just only only mention the temperature here okay i'll just only mention the temperature so here we will get point number 4 okay here we will get the point number 4 this is the point number 4 because 3 is the inlet 3 is the inlet to the uh, inlet to the heat exchanger and 4 is the exit to the heat exchanger right so here this point number 4 is the exit to the heat exchanger right now what happens okay this this hot air which is coming okay it is exhausted okay it is exhausted right now see once it is coming out of see so you just just try to see this diagram okay ts diagram so what you observe okay so 3 to 4 okay or 3 dash to 4 it is what it is a heat exchanger process okay or it is a cooling process which occurs in a heat exchanger see here 3 to 4 you can see this 3 to 4 or 3 dash to 4 see this this 3 to 4 or 3 dash to 4 this is a cooling process okay which occurs in a heat exchanger so what happens during cooling obviously temperature decreases as well as entropy decreases that's why from point number 3 or 3 dash we are just moving down okay so we'll get this point number 4 okay but you may make sure that 
प्रेशर एट पॉइंट नंबर थ्री इज इक्वल टू प्रेशर एट पॉइंट नंबर थ्री डैश इज इक्वल टू प्रेशर एट पॉइंट नंबर फोर एट एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ दिस लाइन ओके प्रेशर इज सेम ओके सो वेदर वेदर the the pressure at the exit of the compressor or it is to the inlet to the heat exchanger or to the exit of the heat exchanger pressure is same okay you can see point number 3 is the exit of the compressor exit of the compressor is what inlet to the heat exchanger okay and from inlet of the heat exchanger to the exit of the heat exchanger pressure remains constant right because process of cooling it is carried out at a constant pressure so whether it is 3 to 4 or whether it is 3 dash to 4 okay that is a constant pressure cooling which occurs in a heat exchanger is that okay is that okay yes is it okay with this diagram yeah is it okay yeah all of you can respond yes you can respond all of you okay now see all of you is is it okay yes yes sir okay now see once it is getting out of first heat exchanger okay this is a point number 4 where it is got getting out of of first heat exchanger what we are doing we are supplying that air to the secondary compressor this is a secondary compressor so see when we point number 4 it is the exit of the heat exchanger exit of the heat exchanger it is nothing but inlet to the compressor okay this is a secondary compressor okay so point number 4 when we talk about point number 4 it is the exit of the heat exchanger or it is inlet to the secondary compressor so what happens in a compressor again it gets compressed okay the air gets compressed okay so initial pressure was p4 and temperature was p4 it got compressed to pressure p5 okay so it got compressed to what it got it got compressed to pressure p5 okay and what temperature we got we got temperature equal to t5 okay now again here as it is a compressor okay so obviously it is having some efficiency okay see here this, this is compressor 1 you can call this is compressor 1 This is compressor two. You can call C two. This is compressor one. This is C one. You you might call. Okay. So what happens? Okay. When you when you move from four to five, four to five, it's the ideal. Four to five, it's the ideal compression. Okay. I I'll, I I'll just write down here. Okay. Here only I'll write down. Okay. You can see here four to five. Okay. Because it's a straight line. Four four to five, it's the ideal. Four to five, it is nothing but ideal. ideal it is nothing but isentropic okay isentropic it is nothing but adiabatic adiabatic compression adiabatic compression right four to five is ideal or isentropic or adiabatic compression where we will get efficiency equal to 100% right there are no losses okay but when you talk about four to five dash okay four to five dash whenever it is dash na it's a actual okay so 4 to 5 dash okay it's a actual compression it's a actual compression so 4 to 5 dash it's a actual compression why it is actual because we will get the efficiency less than 100% right we will get the efficiency less than 100% because this compressor okay it will not be, because it's a mechanical device it will not be 100% efficient okay so it will be having efficiency less than 100 okay so this is all about 4 to 5 dash okay but see whether it's a ideal or whether it's a actual we are compressing it to a same pressure okay so what you'll observe that okay on this line you will get the value of p5 is equal to p5 dash okay so we will we'll get the same pressure on this line okay p5 is equal to p5 dash is that okay yes let me know is that okay We'll get the same pressure. That means that means what? We'll get P phi is equal to P phi dash P phi dash. Okay, so on this line we will get same pressure. P phi and P phi dash are same. Whether we are compressing it isentropically 
or the weather where we are compressing it at a uh, uh, actually okay will will we will be able to get same pressure okay is that okay yes is it okay with this one okay so see here point number 4 it's the inlet to the compressor okay let us see this point number 5 point number 5 it is the exit to the compressor right point number 5 is the exit to the compressor okay so see point number 5 okay again it can be phi or phi dash okay it will depends whether it's a ideal or actual okay, so i'll just mention here this can be phi or this can be phi dash phi or phi dash it can be ide I either ideal or actual right so once it is getting out of the compressor where we are supplying we are supplying it to the another heat exchanger okay so from point number 5 or phi dash okay what will happen the air will be get further cooled okay so its temperature will decrease okay to t6 you can see its temperature will decrease to t6 okay so point number 5 is the inlet to the heat exchanger and 6 is the exit to the heat exchanger 6 is the exit to the heat exchanger so you can see this process okay 5 to 6 or 5 dash to 6 it is nothing but what it's a cooling in a heat exchanger okay so 5 to 6 or 5 dash to 6 it is a cooling in a heat exchanger okay because what happens during cooling is temperature decreases as well as entropy decreases so we will we, we'll get point number 6 is that okay yes let me know is that okay yes now see all of you once once we get the once we get the cooled air at point number 6 See at point number six, what we have? We have cooled air. Okay, that point, that cooled air, we will supply to what? We will supply that to a cooling turbine. Okay, that that cooled air, we will supply to cooling turbine. So in cooling turbine, okay, as you know, six is the inlet to the cooling turbine. Okay, and let us see that this seven is the exit to the cooling turbine. Seven is the exit to the cooling turbine. Now what happens in a cooling turbine? Again, expansion occurs. So when you talk about six to seven, six to seven, seven, it's the ideal expansion. Okay, so here I will write down here. Okay, six to seven, six to seven, it's the ideal, or you can call it as isentropic. Okay, or this is also you can call it as adiabatic, adiabatic expansion, adiabatic. expansion right it is 6 to 7 6 to 7 when you talk about the process 6 to 7 it's adiabatic or isentropic okay or ideal expansion that is 6 to 7 okay where will get the efficiency equal to 100% will get efficiency equal to 100% but what is about 6 to 7 dash okay it's a actual it's a actual expansion right it's a actual expansion okay where will get efficiency less than 100% will get the efficiency 100% because obviously 6 to 7 it occurs in a turbine so obviously turbine will not be 100% efficient okay so in that case we will get the process 6 to 7 dash 6 to 7 dash yeah. okay so what happens during ex expansion you can see temperature decreases from t6 to t7 okay in ideal condition or t6 to t7 dash in actual condition okay so that you can see all of you all of you can observe okay all of you here observe okay we are we are getting cool cool air at point number 7 or 7 dash see all of you all of you just try to understand see if i if i expand from 4 all of you see here okay see if 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 i am not putting this second this compressor and turbine sorry heat exchanger what will happen if i am not putting this compressor and this heat exchanger what will happen okay in that case what will happen we will expand directly from 4 okay to this point try to understand all of you see from point number 4 okay if i directly supply to the cooling turbine what will happen my process becomes like this okay from point number 4 if i directly exp expand my process becomes like this my process becomes directly like this right so in that case what temperature i will get i will get a temperature equal to t8 i will get a temperature equal to t8 okay but but 
what i will do instead of directly supplying to the turbine what i will, what I will do okay from first heat exchanger i will supply to the compressor followed by heat exchanger and then to the turbine okay then what happens i get the temperature what i will get the temperature t7 or t7 dash so you can say that okay t7 is less than th that means i am getting more cooled air is that okay all of you if you want i i i'll just explain it here what 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 is the necessity of doing this why why we are why we are uh, adding one compressor and one one heat exchanger here because see see let, let us assume that this compressor is not there as well as this heat exchanger is also not there okay so from this from this uh, heat exchanger we will direct, directly supply to the turbine so in that case what will happen okay the air will expand like this okay just a minute okay. so the air will expand directly from t4 okay t4 like this right is that okay so air will directly expand like this t4 to some point okay t4 to some point it will expand right let us say that point is t8 so what temperature will get you will get the temperature t8 okay we'll get the temperature t8 okay so this this temperature we will get if we does not include compressor and this heat exchanger okay but we have that right we have a compressor and heat exchanger so due to that what happens okay instead instead of expanding from 4 down what we have done from 4 we are we have compressed compressed it and again we have cooled it okay and then we have expanded it okay as a result what we are happening we are getting temperature t7 or t7 dash you can see we are getting temperature t7 or t7 dash okay which are less than t8 okay which are less than t8 that means we are getting cooled air we are getting cooled air okay see when you neglect this compressor and when you neglect this heat exchanger it becomes simple air cooling system which we have seen in previous lectures okay but but what advantage you will get by adding this compressor and this heat exchanger we are getting cooled temperature we are getting more cooled air as compared to the simple air cooling system yeah is that okay yes let me know is that okay with this one yes all of you let me know is that okay understood or not yes understood yes understood yes sir yes now see once it is getting out of the cabin uh, out of the turbine what we are doing we are supplying that air to the cabin okay so the uh, what i will do okay now i'll i'll start with this point so point number 7 is the exit of the turbine from where we will supply that to the cabin okay and it will further go out at point number 8 okay so point number 7 is the inlet to the cabin and point number 8 is the exit to the cabin okay so in cabin what happens when this air flow into the cabin okay the air abstract the heat from the cabin try to understand so air abstract the heat from the cabin so when air abstract the heat from the cabin what happens temperature of the cabin gets lowered okay temperature of the cabin gets decreased okay and as a result we are getting a refrigerating effect in the cabin we are getting the refrigerating effect in the cabin or cockpit whatever you call okay so what happens with the temperature of the air temperature of the air increases see because here what is the temperature temperature was t uh, t7 right see temperature was t7 here temperature is t8 okay but you observe that temperature at t8 you will get get greater than the temperature at e7 because what happens when the air flow into the cabin air abstract the heat from the cabin and when air air abstract the heat what happens air gets heated okay air gets heated but what is about cabin cabin gets cooled okay so here you can observe okay 7 or 7 dash to 8 okay it is nothing but what it is a cooling okay you can see this see this 7 to 8 Or seven dash to eight. Okay, here the temperature is increasing. Why the temperature is increased? Because we getting we are getting the refrigerating effect in the cabin. Okay, is that okay? Because what happens? 
when you when you supply this air to the cabin, okay, air abstract the heat from the cabin. That's why temperature of the air will increase from T seven to T eight. You can see temperature of the air will increase from T seven to T eight. But what happened with the cabin temperature? It get decreases. Okay, it get decreases. Is that okay? All of you. Is that okay or not? Yes. Yes. All of you. Is that okay? So now, what is what is seven to eight? What is seven to eight? Seven or seven dash to eight? Okay, it is nothing but a cooling process. Okay, it is the nothing but cooling in a cabin, cooling or a refrigerating effect in the cabin. Cooling or refrigerating effect in cabin. Refrigerating effect in the cabin. Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay with this one? Yes. 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 Because see what happens now. What happens when you directly you directly see the point number four? Okay, the point number four is the exit of the first heat exchanger. Okay, so if you don't have a compressor and if you don't have this heat exchanger, if these two components are not there, what will happen? From point number four, you will expand directly down. From point number four, you you will directly come it down. Okay, you will get somewhere point here, right? But instead of that, okay, if you add one more compressor, you will compress it. You will again cool it and you will bring it to the expansion. So we'll get point number seven here. So what you will get in that case, you will get lower temperature. Okay, that is you will get T seven or T seven dash, which are less as compared to T eight. Okay, what are the point point by right? So that that advantage you will get by using bootstrap. Right, that advantage you will get it by using bootstrap. Okay, otherwise see if, if this secondary compressor and if this heat exchange heat exchanger is not there. It becomes a simple air cooling system. So by adding secondary compressor and secondary heat exchanger, what 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 effect we got? We are able to get a less temperature. Okay, we are able to get less temperature. Okay, after see which is available at the exit of the turbine. See T seven or T seven dash. We are getting less. Okay, because because see. T seven or T eight, we need to supply it to the cabin, right? Because in in the cabin, if you supply the air with low temperature, then only it can absorb more amount of heat. See, all of you try to understand. See, if if the temperature at the inlet of the cabin is T seven, okay, what is that? Let let us say it is fifty. Uh, let us say it is twenty uh, four. Uh, not twenty four. Let us say it is forty. Okay. And temperature at the exit of the cabin, let's say it is sixty. Okay, or you can also take take another case where temperature at the inlet to the cabin is let's say twenty, and at the exit of the uh, cabin is sixty. Okay, tell me in which case more heat will transfer, whether it is in the first case or in the second case. This is the first case where temperature at the inlet is forty. Okay. And in second case, temperature at the inlet is twenty. Okay, tell me in which case the more heat will flow, all of you, in the first case or in the second case? Yes. Yes. In which case the more heat will flow, all of you? In which case the more heat will flow? A simple. More the temperature difference, more the heat will flow, right? Here temperature difference is only twenty. Here temperature difference is forty. So in second case, there is more heat transfer because there is more temperature difference, right? Is that okay? Yes. Let me know. Is that okay? Yes. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So see, this is this is what the bootstrap. Uh, air cooling system is simple see it is simple it is as simple as a simple air cooling system okay if you want i'll i'll just also show you that what is simple air cooling system see this is simple air cooling system okay in simple air cooling system what we'll do okay instead of supplying directly to the turbine 
we will supply to the one more compressor followed by heat exchanger and then we will supply to the cooling thermal okay you can see here so instead of directly supplying this air to the cooling turbine we will supply first to the compressor followed by secondary heat exchanger and then to the cooling turbine okay now now see whatever the power that is produced by the cooling turbine okay will be will be used so as to run the secondary compressor okay so whatever the power that is been produced by cooling turbine will be utilized so as to run a compressor okay which will compress the fluid which will compress the air from first compressor uh, first heat exchanger to the secondary heat exchanger right so this is what we can get okay so are, are you able to understand what what advantage you you get by do, by doing this because by doing this we are getting more cool air at the inlet to the cabin or at the exit to the cabin okay all of you try to understand okay so the temperature difference or temperature what you will get at the exit of the cabin it is it is very less as compared to the simple air cooling system okay all of you what, what i need to convey if you, if you see here this diagram what is the temperature here at the inlet to the turbine it is t4 you can see the temperature at the inlet to the turbine is t4 and at the exit to the turbine it is t5 okay temperature at the exit to the uh, turbine is t5 okay so what is about this diagram okay what is the temperature that is available at the exit of the turbine it is t7 okay so here you can say that t7 it is less than 5 try to understand okay that means if you operate like this you will get less temperature at the exit of the turbine as compared to the as compared to the simple air cooling system see this is the temperature in simple air cooling system this is the temperature in bootstrap air cooling system okay so in bootstrap air cooling system you are getting less temperature as compared to the simple air cooling system that is that is that, that is the reason why okay this this system make it different okay as as compared to the simple air cooling system is that okay all of you is that okay yes is it okay with this one yes sir yes okay yes, see here all of you yeah see see how we have started we have started with point number 1 okay this is the inlet condition so from inlet condition we have ramped it okay so as we have ramped it what happens okay its pressure increases as well as its temperature increases okay so here pressure was p1 okay so all of you see here what what was the, what was the pressure here the pressure was here p1 i'll just write down here just wait. here what what is the pressure pressure was p1 temperature was p1 here what happens pressure becomes p2 okay and temperature becomes t2 okay so what we observe pressure is p2 or you can call this as p2 dash okay it is greater than p1 so pressure got increase similarly what happens with the temperature temperature also got increase okay so temperature t2 also got increased okay that that means t2 and t2 dash they are greater than t1 right is that okay yes is that okay or not pressure also increases the temperature also increases yes is, is it okay yes sir increases, temperature also increases right now further when we supply to the compressor what will happen again pressure also increases temperature also increases again when we supply to the heat exchanger what will happen pressure will remains constant but its temperature will decrease okay see if you want if you if you want i'll, I'll just write down here we'll get the value of p2 see if you want i will also 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 write it down here we'll get the value of p2 okay we'll get the value of p2 or p2 dash which is greater than p1 similarly we will get it t2 or t2 dash which is greater than t1 right okay Th that is after the ramming okay now after the compression we will get a process point p3 or p3 dash that is the pressure which is greater than p2 okay similarly we will get a temperature t3 or t3 dash that is greater than t2 okay pressure is also increased temperature also increases now what happens when you supply to the heat exchanger okay what will happen when you supply to the heat exchanger pressure will remains constant okay that means value of 
P4, P4 is equal to P3 or P3 dash. Pressure will remain constant. But what will happen with the temperature? Temperature decreases. Okay. So we will get the value of P4. We will get the value of P4, which is less than T3 or T3 dash. Right. So value of T4, we will get less as compared to T3 or T3 dash. Right. Now again, when we supply it to the compressor, what will happen? Again, it will be get compressed. So when it will be get compressed, what happened with the pressure and temperature? Okay. So when we compress it, again, its pressure will increase. Here only I'll write down. So here pressure, see here, pressure will increase. That is P5 and P5 dash. It is greater than P4. If, if you want, I'll just write down. P5 and P5 dash. It is greater than P4. See, pressure is increased during compression. Similarly, temperature also increases. So T5 and T5 dash, it is greater than T4. Right? T4. Now, again, we are going, going to cooling. So during cooling, what happens? Pressure remains constant. Okay? That means we will get the value of P6. Okay, P6 we will get equal to P5 or P5 dash. Okay? But what happened with the temperature? Temperature decreases. So T6, we will get its value, okay, which is less than T5 or T5 dash. Okay? T6, we will get it because temperature will be decreased. It will be decreased from T5 or T5 dash to T6. Okay? Now, then we will supply to what? Then we will supply to the cooling turbine. So in cooling turbine, what happens? Okay? Again, pressure decreases. Okay? So pressure, we will get P7 less than P6, we will get okay, P7 or we can call it as P7 dash. Okay, we will get it less than P6. What happened with the temperature? Temperature, we will get it as okay, T7 or this is temperature is T7 dash. We will get it less than T6. See here, temperature get decreases from T6 to T7. Right? Is that okay or not? Let me know. All of you, is it okay or not? Yes. Let me know. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, once you supply that to the cabin, what will happen? In cabin, what happens? Can anybody know? Anybody let me know. So in cabin, what happens? In cabin, you will get same pressure. You will get P8 equal to P7 or P7 dash. But what happened with the temperature? TH. P8, it got increased as compared to T7 or T7 dash. Right? T7 or T7 dash. See, every temperature I've shown you. T7 dash. Right? Is that okay? See, same, same you can observe. Same you can observe on a TS diagram. Same you can observe on a TS diagram. Is, is it okay? Yes. Is it okay? Yes, sir. So have you understood? See, in, in, in multiple ways, okay, I have explained you the PV and TS diagram. Now, why this cycle is efficient? Why this cycle it is more uh, beneficial as compared to the simple air cooling system? Because what happens? The temperature what we get at the inlet to the cabin, it is very low as compared to the simple air cooling system. Okay. Whatever the temperature that you get in a simple cooling system, simple air cooling system at the, at the exit of the turbine. Okay. And if you compare the same temperature in bootstrap air cooling system, what you'll get? This you will get the value of T7. T7. That is the temperature which is available at the exit of the exit of the cooling turbine or at the inlet to the cabin. Okay. So this T7, okay, it is it is very, very less. It is very, very less as compared to the, as compared to the, I'll, I'll just show you that, as compared to the T5. See here, T5. Here also, T5 is the exit to the uh, turbine or inlet to the cabin. So he, here the temperature is T5. Here temperature is T7. So what we are getting, we are, here we are getting T7 is less as compared to the T5. Okay. That's why it will give you more cooling in the cabin. It will give you the more cooling in the cabin. Is that okay? All of you? Yes? Yes, sir. Sir, namaz ka time ho Yes, yes. 
so with this okay with this we will finish the today's session and in the next session we will see a simple bootstrap air evaporative cooling system evaporative cooling system okay so if you have any doubt or difficulty you can let me know otherwise we can conclude this session